am so excited to introduce my guest to you today, the wonderful, the magnificent Susan Warwick coming to us from Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome. Hello, hey everybody. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. So you are an extraordinary woman, just to name a few of your accomplishments. You are a multi-champion bodybuilder, a sponsored athlete, a successful restaurant owner. You also have your own fitness training business. Plus you're a mom to three very accomplished sons. Um, wow. <laughs> so yes. for, yeah, can you take us on your journey just first, how you got to be an elite championship bodybuilder. I mean, that started honestly after I got divorced mm -hmm. and I realized like I, I had lost me. So I started on the fitness journey, working out, getting in shape. And it just became my passion and that along with like other work I was doing on me, I literally did a whole transformation on myself pretty much from the inside out. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And I would imagine too bodybuilding of all things really gives you your, your literal power back, right? right? right. <laughs> it gives you confidence, strength, and you know more than just the physical way yeah oh that's amazing i am i'm very envious i have to say i have my little six pounders that i do <laughs> and the whole competition thing was something that like if you ever told me i'd get on stage in an auditorium in a bikini in front of all these hundreds of people i would have told you you're crazy it it took me completely out of my comfort zone, which is exactly what I needed. Wow. Exactly what I needed. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I admire you so much for that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah that, that's yeah. about as, as literally stripped down as one can get. Right? Yeah. And then it just became a, a thing of mine to do at least one competition a year. That was my goal. Every year I would do at least one. I had a couple of years where I did three, which is a, is a lot because the mm -hmm. whole training and, you know, the whole process leading up to a competition is a lot, mm -hmm. the training, the nutrition, but it is, I did enjoy the process. Wow. <laughs> and always having that goal and something to look forward to is going to keep you on track. Yes. You know, yes. yeah. So yes. You know, some might say you came to this later in life. <laughs> oh, definitely later in life. I like to say I bloomed late. <laughs> so I wonder, do you have any advice for someone who might say, oh, I'm quote, too old to start something new or are afraid? Because I think we let age sometimes, you know, get in our way. Definitely. You, you just have to go for it. Like, you have to get past the fear because you'll never know if you don't try. Mm. And for me, it was also because I was a divorced mom of three. I wanted to be a good role model for my children. And like, they were probably my biggest, you know, cheerleaders oh. on a day. Like you wouldn't be, you'd be like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to do it. And they'd be like, no, come on, come on. Like they gave me a name. They called me a uh, fit mom diva is what they <laughs> nicknamed me. <laughs> like, Come on, you got to do it. Or if I would like go to like cheat with something I was eating. No, you can't do that. Like they, they, if I was going off track, they were putting me back on the track. So, and now I can see, especially my son who plays lacrosse, he is exactly the way I was when I was, you know, training competition, he's very routine and he does his meal prep and he takes care of himself. So it makes me feel good because I feel like I was a good role model. So Absolutely. Oh, I love that. And I love that. 
you know, your kids could be part of that encouraging community. Because sometimes we feel like, oh, it, my kids and I have my other community, but we can, especially when they're older, we can, we can bring them in and have us, have them help us. I can't imagine you must have just been like, zip it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Yeah, but I don't think like age, I mean, I'm 55 right now. I don't feel 55, but I am. <laughs> you can't, it's just a number. It all the, it's all about how you feel. Yeah. And you, yeah. life is too short not to try what you want. That is such a, per that's so perfect. And I think we also get in our minds, you know, oh, I'm not in shape yet. So I don't want to go to the gym, which makes no sense. <laughs> Right. But, you know, I know I get self-conscious when I think about the people looking at me, which P.S. No one is looking at me, you know, but we get in our heads. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Mm. Even if you find a friend or join, there's so many training groups of women out there and become part of a group mm -hmm. with the training. And it's funny, like with the competitions, you would think the women would like, you know, because we're all competing against each other. You would think there would be that competition and maybe the cattiness and all that you can get. And it's the women were so we were all so supportive of each other. Mm. It was it was a real nice, you know, bond and camaraderie around, among everybody, especially like backstage, mm. everybody supporting everybody, even though when we got out there, we were competing against each other. But Everybody was there for everybody. It was really nice. Wow. Well, I would imagine too, you're all doing this really challenging thing. So it, you're, you kind of have that shared, I worked really hard to get here. You worked really hard to get here. Let's support each other. Yeah. Isn't that nice? Wow. Mm -hmm. So you had your kids really keeping you on track. Was there anything you would say to yourself when you didn't feel like working out or any mantras or encouraging words that you had? More just like you, you, you got this, you, you can do it, you know? Yeah. yeah. You pretty much, you got this. Oh, because ultimately people can encourage us as much as they want, but it has to come from inside us because we're exactly. the ones who are getting up early in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You have to be the one to definitely want it. Yeah. Mm. I think you have to get to that place where you, you just want it. And that's, that's your focus. That's your goal. Mm. And you have to set goals. Like the first year I started training, I had set like, okay, I'm going to compete in May. Well, I wasn't ready in May, so I didn't. So then I went, okay, you'll do the summer show. I still wasn't ready. It took me to November to be ready to do my first competition. Mm. So you just set baby goals. That's terrific. And I also, I love that you weren't like, you know, I'm setting it for May. Oh, darn, I can't do May. You were just like, okay, we'll do this one. Now, you know, so I think yeah, we're moving also, forward. Yeah, yeah, we're so hard on ourselves, aren't we? Most oh, of the time. Yep. And it's us all in our heads. It, <laughs> it, just, it didn't like what different, as long as I did it, which yeah. I did. And then I, I think I came in second on that show for my first show. I was like, I was so very happy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right. That's incredible. So yeah, I guess, I guess the whole, it's sort of, it's encouraging ourselves, but always with kindness. Like not, there's never the, you know, oh, you loser, you have to do this. It's like, you can do it. And if you don't make the May goal, it's fine. Just keep going. I think that the kindness to ourselves. Yeah. You can beat yourself up. Yes. Some of us are so good at that. <laughs> you have to be kind to yourself and you have to love yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm so happy to be talking to you because you really, you really epitomize um, transformation and being kind to yourself after going through such a difficult time. Um, what do they say? You, you can crawl in a hole, you can climb a mountain. I mean, you really chose right. to climb a mountain. Right. Wow. Right. When I got divorced, that was tough. And 
not everyone thought I was going to be able to be on my own and make it. And yeah. I was determined I was going to prove those people wrong. Yes. Yeah. See, that can also be motivating, right? Don't listen, prove them wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I love that. Wow. And when you measure power, it's nobody can take that away from you. Yes. Yes. You your power and your competence. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I had lost a lot of things when I was married. You, you know, you're married, you're raising three kids. I was home with them, which I loved and very fortunate that I was able to. And then when the youngest, you know, the youngest one was going off to kindergarten, you're like, okay, now what? Yeah, yeah, what exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. And what a great time to reinvent yourself because some people I think try to maybe go back to what they used to do and it may not fit anymore because they're so different. Yeah. So to kind of say, well, the world is my oyster. Now what? Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I had no clue that fitness was like my passion, but once I got into it and started with the trainer and then I loved it so much and then I got certified as a trainer. Wow. Yeah, I was like, it was, you know, I wanted to pass on to other women what I had, you know, done for myself and how I helped me. I wanted to be able to help others. You know? mm, that must be like a lot of us lose ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're, we're sort of, I don't want to say encouraged to do that, but there isn't a lot of encouragement to not do that. Right. You know? Right. Wow. Well, speaking of reinvention, can we talk about the restaurant, which I really want to come to? <laughs> yes, I would love for you to come. <laughs> so about two and a half years ago, a friend of mine had an opportunity to purchase a restaurant. And she was like, no, neither one of us had any restaurant experience. <laughs> And at the time we were like, we had been talking, maybe we'll do something together. And then this opportunity came up and we were like, all right, let's go for it. <laughs> Who would have ever thought? So right? we got it September and then the following March is when COVID hit. Oh my gosh. Of course, right? right? <laughs> but knock on wood, we, uh, we made it. We made it through COVID. Wonderful. And um, it's the restaurant is doing better than when we took it over. So oh, wow. it's a lot of work, a lot yeah. of hours, but uh, it's definitely. Do you, do you enjoy? Do you enjoy this this other new thing that you're, yeah. you're trying? <laughs> yeah. Which again is another example. I had no idea about the restaurant business, so I had to learn it all. Mm -hmm. Learn it all. And uh, again, we're doing well. So yeah, you 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 can you can do whatever you put your mind to. You can, and that and that being open to the opportunity comes. It's sort of now or never because you can talk for years right. about let's try something, let's blah blah blah, and right. just to, to go for it. I mean, that's yep. clearly your spirit. It's like okay, let's jump and see what happens. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, did you do research? Did you, you know, consult? Uh, no, just oh. jumped in. We started like going there to work because the owner at the time wasn't letting anybody know he was selling. So we went as his friends to help him out and learn a little. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's Amazing. And yeah. what's the call? We'll have it at the end so people out there can go visit it called PPC Italian Restaurant in Plastow, mm -hmm. New Hampshire. Wonderful. Oh, I got to make it there. I was looking at the website and I said, oh, it all looks so good. <laughs> we, have a, we have quite the menu, quite the menu. Yes. So great. Yeah. So at Choose Happiness, we talk a lot about the importance of community and really surrounding yourselves with people who lift you up and encourage you and then gently letting go of the people who don't. So in both of these endeavors, you've obviously found a real community mm -hmm. and that's helped. I've made like my circle very small. Yeah, I've made my circle very small. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. The people you can count on. 
Right. Mm, that's important. No drama, none of, none of, none of that. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. Don't need. Yeah. 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 I found that in my life too, that sometimes we hang on to people simply because they've always been our friends or whatever. And then as we evolve and they, we don't jive anymore, it's, it can be hard. Right. Um, but that's letting all part of the transformation. Of, letting go of, which is not easy because it could be family members too, letting go of people that no longer serve you right. or, you know, or mm -hmm. I don't want to say suck the life out of you, but you have to take care of you mm -hmm. and it's okay to let people go. It may not be easy, but it's okay. Like, you know what? Yeah. If people come into your life that, you know, you know, the saying you either come in for a, a season. Uh, what is it? What is the saying now? A reason, a season. What is, I can't think of the saying I now. Think it's a reason, a season or a lifetime, something like that. Yeah. Yes. I, mm -hmm. and that was another thing I like once I got my voice back, as I like to say, like, I liked meeting people, learning about them. Even if you meet somebody and you just take one thing from that person, that might be all, that might be the reason you met just for that one thing. And now you, you move on. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that also goes with the whole being kind to yourself, honoring yourself, um, and putting yourself first. I feel like as women, we're told that that's selfish. Yes, especially if you're a mom. Yes, right? <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> Children, the husband. Mm -hmm. And then you. Yes. We have to put ourselves first on our to-do list. Yeah. Oh, I love first it. First on our to-do list. Yeah. Because oh, that's I found when, when I got to a place where I felt really good about me. Mm -hmm. It was, everything flowed better. I was a better person to the children. Right. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that funny? I feel like we're taught, but where the truth is, if we're top of our, to, of our, you know, to, not to-do list, our priority list, we yeah. can then be our best selves for everybody else. But we're not taught that ever, I feel like. No, we're not. We're yeah. not. We're, we're made to feel like guilty if we're taking care of ourselves first. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I would imagine when you're lifting those thousands of pounds or whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> I, I would, it started out like therapy for me, honestly, the whole gym and it was like, I would call it therapy. Yeah. You know? And then my happy place. And oh. then it, it yeah. definitely changed, you know, changed my life. And the other good thing about that in particular is when you're in the gym, that's really all you can focus on. Right. That would be the, the hour where they would, I, I'm not answering the call. Like everybody knew if I, she's at the gym, you're not bothering her. Like that's my one hour of me time. Oh, that is great. You're, you are inspiring me so much to go back. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> It's hard, especially mm -hmm. with the way the world has been in the last two years. So yeah, yeah, because it was closed for a while and then it opened back up, yeah. and you're like, "How safe do I feel?" And but I think we're in a. All right, I'm gonna channel. I'm gonna channel Susan in the next couple. Of weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tell me, you um, you have a, an amazing work life balance, the kids the multiple businesses, everything. Do you have any advice for those of us who are juggling lots of, or spinning plates in the air? How do you, uh, how do you manage your balance so magnificently? I don't know if it's always magnificent. <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm very routine, very organized. Mm -hmm. I think that, I feel like that's my key. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm very organized and that's great. Yeah. I think you have to be, I mean, you're juggling so much, you know, I mean, you have days and you're like, but it's okay to have those days. And then, right. You know, get, mm -hmm. 
put it all together the next day. <laughs> I love that, exactly. <laughs> I remember when the kids were little, we had a color-coded calendar for all four of us so we could look at the calendar and know exactly who had to be where, when. Right. And it was so great. And then, you know, why don't you use your phone calendar? I'm like, no, no, I need my colors. I need to see, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's really and it's awesome. okay if you like you have that bad day and you can you can't beat yourself up. Embrace that, embrace however you're feeling at that moment, and then be with it if you need to be with it all the whole day. Yeah. And the next day, get up and do what you need to do. <laughs> Try it again. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to record this and have you in my ear when I need you. <laughs> it's really yeah. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, I find it really hard not to beat our, beat ourselves up, uh, you know, even if just a little thing, you know, goes wrong, but it's just, and I like the idea too of sitting with that and saying, okay, this didn't go the way I really wanted it to let's, let's deal with it and acknowledge it rather than just bury it. And then it comes out weeks it's later, gonna, you know, right. It's going to keep mm -hmm. going. If we try to, if there's an issue there. For You're sure. so wise. So wise. <laughs> so you, you know, I've known you for, for some years now <laughs> yeah, since the babies. Right. And you, you've always been such an upbeat and positive person. And you really connect with the idea of that happiness is a choice. And you've made yeah. these amazing choices in your life. Do you have any um, specific things you could share, like that you turn to? I'm sure your exercise routine is one of them. Right. Anything, anything else? Meditation, journaling, mm. daily affirmations. Mm -hmm. Like if you go in my bathroom, <laughs> it's filled <laughs> with post-it notes all over. I love that. Can you share what some, what some of them say? Can you think of any of them? Like um, one is, Oh, that's right. I like, well, one now since I've read your book is I choose happiness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And another one is what is meant to be will find me. Oh, I love that. Because mm. that also goes with staying open to things. Because if you're open, then it's like, well, if something comes, you're ready for it. Like right. a restaurant, for example. Right. Right. <laughs> wow. Oh, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that on my mirror. I'm. I'm looking forward to it. Wow. Well, it has been got yeah, such a joy to talk to you. You're just such an inspiration. I could talk to you all day. I know you have things to do. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. It was wonderful to see you. And we'll have the restaurant and the notes. And at the end. Susan Warwick, woman extraordinaire. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs>